uh, Boru Aboye, Orisha Lifestyle for Beginners. Now, this is a, a beginner's conversation that peeks into a, a, a more advanced form of practice. But it's really important for you to put into your, into your vision of what is on the horizon for you potentially. Um, I'm teaching a class as a part of the certification process on the healing modalities. And in this class, we cover a broad spectrum of healing practices. Um, and we cover uh, a broad spectrum of the materials that go into healing practices. And we cover a broad spectrum of the disciplines that go into the healing practices, okay? So when, we're, when I'm talking about modalities, you know, the spectrum of modalities, bone setting and trance and divination, for example, when I'm talking about the materials that go into the healing practices, I'm talking about everything from water to a variety of different plants to uh, different animal products. And when I'm talking about the actual practices and discipline that go into these, these healing modalities, um, where I'm talking about um, incantation, r um, rituals, ceremonies, etc. Right? And it just, it's very broad, it's very vast. There's a lot that goes into Yoruba healing. And the challenge for us who are uh, from the outside looking in, we want to reduce everything down in very simple terms and say, for example, Shango only does this, uh, Osain only does that, Obatala only does that. And it's, it isn't quite that, it's not siloed quite like that. Uh, the thing that you've got to understand is that all the Orishas do pretty much the same kinds of things. It's just different degrees or different, you know, measurements. So divination, uh, use of, of uh, natural elements like water and stones and um, plants and bones and animals and incantations and divination and rituals and ceremonies and trance and uh, and drumming and, 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 you know, everybody is going to make use of all those elements, but they're just going to be in varying degrees. Maybe one Orisha really has 60% of uh, their healing practices may consist of this. And for another Orisha, only 25% of their healing practices will consist of that. Okay. But they're all going to kind of make use of the same kinds of elements with different measurements. The reason why this matters to you, though, as the beginner is because if you try to start from the perspective of the Orisha, you know what's going to happen is that you're going to get drawn in by your first impression of the Orisha, which is probably something very superficial and stereotypical, right? What, what I call the Orisha Zodiac. You, you see that Shango is, you know... A, 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 a kingly king, a beautiful king, and he wears this, you know, brilliant red and his hair is braided and, you know, and, and oh, that's me. I feel like that. And you may just, you know, that may be a projection of how you want to feel, right? But in your spirit, you may not be that at all. You may gravitate towards Shango because it brings something out of you, but that may not be your spirit, Right? And divination, sure, divination is great. It's very accurate. It can be very accurate in telling you, you know, what your profile is. But it really is going to tell you what your profile is at the moment of divination. It's very important. You, gotta, you can't, you know, overstate the impact of a single divination on a single day because tomorrow you get something else and the day after it'll be something different. Okay? And this is where the the practices of the Orisha Lifestyle Academy become super crucial to your practice, to what you're going to devote your life to, to the vocation that you're going to develop and make into your life's work. It starts with your self-discovery. What are your natural gifts and talents? There are some things that you chose in the prenatal state. There's some things that you know naturally, things that you don't have to be told, things you don't have to be, you know, convert, co co you know, uh, uh, cajoled 
and convinced to do. You just you just have to do that. You exist in that way. Those are your natural gifts and talents. They're yours. They're yours. No one can take them from you. You would do them by yourself, right? You just you just have to be in the world in a certain way. That's where you start. You ex you you discover it. You embrace it. You you really accept it that this is who you are and what you're about and how you exist. Once you've got that in hand and you and you accept what that is, the next step is starting a, a daily practice that's going to enhance that, it's going to amplify that, it's going to refine that, it's going to hone it, it's going to take it to a higher and higher level of professionalism and, and precision. And as you're cultivating those levels of precision and excellence in your natural gifts and talents, then it's a question of application. Who, who am I going to do this with? Okay, where am I going to offer these services? Who most desperately needs this? Who's going to benefit the most from this? Who's going to get the most out of it and give me the most back in the process? Who do I serve? Right. And who is destined to be served by me? That is going to flip the whole thing on its on its ear so that when you're starting from that place and at the same time you're discovering, well, which Orisha you are meant to work with, then you're going to get an entirely different perspective. I borrow a boy. Ah, uh, bon